Good morning and welcome to Nairobi Chapel Imara Church Online. Thank you for always tuning in. Thank you for being with us in our services and my name is Grace and I'm one of the pastors here at Nairobi Chapel and I'm super glad to be your host today. As we get ready to get into our service, allow me to read a scripture and I'm going to invite the praise and worship team after this. If you have your Bible, kindly open with me the book of Psalms. 145 I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 3 this is what it says I'm reading from the NIV version this is what the Bible says I will exalt you my God and King I will praise your name forever and ever every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever wow david had dedicated himself to praise the lord and verse 3 says great is the lord and most worthy of praise his greatness no one can fathom or understand guys this is one of my favorite psalms of david and this is a psalm of praise and you see here david says giving a commitment to exalt the lord giving a commitment to praise the lord forever and ever to praise the lord in all circumstances in all situations and guys from your living room this morning i'm inviting you to praise the lord with us if you need to create some space on your on your in your sitting room move the stools and the chairs and the table and get some space to dance unto the lord as we praise him because our god is great our God is worthy of our praise, of my praise, of your praise. So I'm inviting you, let us praise the Lord together. Allow me to pray as we begin our service. Father Lord, we thank you this beautiful Sunday morning. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, for preserving us, protecting us, and even enabling us, Lord, to be in a situation or in a position whereby we can praise you. As we begin our service, Lord, would you be with us from the beginning to the end? As we get into praising you, receive our praises, receive our worship, Lord, because that is what we are offering you today. May you be glorified. May you be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. So with a clap back at home, let's invite the praise and worship team as they come to lead us in a moment of praise and worship.
Yes, Lord. Indeed, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. There is no other God like you. You are great. You are sovereign. And that is why we praise you. That is why we adore you. Back at home, church, I'm inviting you to a moment of prayer. Just take some time to pray. And Father Lord, as we continue in this moment of prayer, Lord, we thank you because we know that you are great and you love us. Oh God, this morning we are casting our burdens unto you because you care. We cast our worries unto you because you care for us, oh God. Many of us are worried, oh God, because of the uncertainty that we are in, oh Jehovah. But Lord, this morning, morning we cast our anxiety unto you because you care about us oh God Father Lord I'm committing the families oh God that some people who are ailing in those families oh my Lord I'm praying for your healing you are Jehovah Rapha you are the Lord that healeth our diseases Father some of us have lost our jobs or received pay cuts oh God Father we are committing our needs unto you oh Lord that even in this season Jehovah we continue to exhort you as Jehovah Jehovah the Lord who provides oh God we know in you we will not lack anything good Lord would you continue to provide for those families oh Lord Father I'm praying for the children who are at home and we're in a season, oh God, where the, the leadership of this nation is trying to figure out how the kids will go back to school. How will that look like, oh God? Father, I pray that would you give our leadership the right direction, oh God. And when the kids go back to school, if they will, oh Lord, I pray, my God, that you'll give them the synergy, oh Lord, to continue with their curriculum, to continue their studies, oh God. I particularly pray for the candidates, oh God. Many of them are worried, oh Lord, wondering how will it turn out, oh Lord. But I pray. Pray, Father, would you be with them? Would you encourage them, O oh Lord? And I pray above all, would you make a way for them that they'll continue with their exams, that they'll continue with their, edu in their education, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray for every member of Nairobi Chapel Limara and everyone who is watching us online today. You know them by their names. You can locate them wherever they are. And today I speak a blessing over them. May you meet them at the very point of their need. May none of them suffer luck. Oh God, would you keep them? Would you protect them? Would you preserve them even during this season and be with them? Lord, we bless you. Lord, we honor you and we exalt you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody say amen from home. Amen. Thank you for joining me. In that time of prayer indeed it's always a joy to pray when we pray he hears us and he answers us and he shows us great and mighty things that we do not know of so even at home during the week when you feel downcast when you feel discouraged say a prayer to the Lord he hears even you he will hear you and he will answer you so thank you very much for that awesome awesome moment now it's time to give and giving time is always a blessing time so prepare your tithes prepare your offering and as you do that allow me to read a scripture and then i'll give you instructions on how we're giving today proverbs chapter 3 from verse 9 to verse 10 let us hear the words of the wise man on giving what did he have to say honor the lord with your wealth with the first fruits of all your crops then your bands will be filled to overflowing and your vats will bring over with new wine. These are the wise of, words of the wise man, Solomon himself, saying that let's honor the Lord. It's an honor when we give the Lord. And he's asking us to honor the Lord with our wealth. You could be saying, I'm not that wealthy, but honor the Lord with what he has given you with the first fruit of what you have received. Honor him and guess what? Then your pantry will never run dry. Your wardrobe will never run dry. You will not lack when we honor the Lord with your wealth, with your giving and with your tithes. And how are we going to give today? You can give through M-Pesa to the pay bill number that is on your screen, 508-701. And, at, and the, account, at, at the account name, kindly write NC Imara so that the funds can be designated to Nairobi Chapel Imara. If you're drawing a check today, kindly write Nairobi Chapel and behind the check indicate NC Imara. Let us pray, for, let me pray for us as we give. 
Father Lord, we thank you for the reminder this morning, even from the wise man Solomon himself, that we should honor you with our wealth. And Lord, today, these are our tithes, these are our offerings. We bring them to you, O oh God, with a heart that is full of praise, with a heart of gratitude for what you've done to us, for what you've given to us, O oh God. May you be glorified in our giving. And Lord, there could be some of us who have no gift to give you today. Lord, even to them, I speak your blessing. Provide for them, O oh God, so that they may have a gift to give unto you. We bless you, Lord, and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be blessed as you give to the Lord. Now, right about this time, we're going to get to a moment of hearing the word of God. And the Lord has anointed his servant today to speak to you and to speak to me. So gather your Bible, gather your notebook and pen, and let us hear the word of God. Help me welcome Pastor Mesha Kwaswa, who is going to preach to us today. Good morning, and buona asifiwe. Thank you very much for tuning in and also following us from wherever you are. What a nice opportunity to share the word of God on this platform. My name is Pastor Mesh. I am one of the pastors here and I'm excited to share the word of God with you today. I trust that the Lord has kept you and the Lord has been with you in this season of pandemic. I also trust that you have been taking time to observe the guidelines that the Ministry of Health has set apart so that we can protect ourselves against this pandemic that is all around. At this time, I also want to take this opportunity to pray with those of us who have been affected or affected with this disease. And I pray that the Lord may heal you, may the Lord strengthen you, and may the Lord come through for you, because our God is able and our God is our healer. My prayer goes out again to those of us who are going through again this pandemic, and you're also sitting in your homes or wherever you are, probably you are also in the, you are also in a space, you are wondering where is God. I want to encourage you that the Lord is with you. You know, in this season, my prayer for the church, both the local and the international church, it is, may this season not come to an end and leave us the same. I pray that you and I will allow the Lord to interact with us. You and I will allow the Lord to birth a new experience, a new way of doing things. We shall not go back to do things the same way we used to be, because I believe that the Lord is able to do a new thing through us. And the Lord desires us as his children to grow. So join me as we share the word of God together. At this time, let me draw your attention into the book of Romans chapter 8 from verse 37 through to 39. And also, I will also encourage you and minister to you through a topic I have entitled, God is not done with us. Paul the Apostle is the author of the book of Romans and he was writing to encourage and strengthen the believers. And at this time, I want to share the same encouragement so that our faith can be lifted up. Romans 8, 37 through to 39, and I will read in the New International Version, Know in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers. You mention every powers that you think. The Lord says, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The passage I have just read was written down by Apostle Paul while he was in Greece in his third missionary journey. Paul listed several terrible things that might happen to a person in this present life. He wanted the church or the Christians then to know of all the things that he has mentioned, nothing 
could separate us from the love of God. Nothing terrible could ever happen and keep us far from God. He says, in all these things that he has mentioned, we are more than conquerors because Christ has given us strength. Paul continues to mention things like trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, and sword. All these things, we are more than conquerors. In some of life's toughest circumstances, it is easy to feel like God is distant. Or even that maybe when we have fallen or we have blundered, we normally feel that God has separated himself from us. We look to our circumstances to determine God's position towards us. Church, I think when we do this, we lose sight of how God is great. I know in this season, many of us are, are asking themselves many questions. For example, I know some of you are asking yourself, where is God when pandemic strikes? We had the floods with us. We had the locust experience with us. And right now, we are dealing with COVID-19. And some of us have been affected or even affected with the same thing. And you're asking yourself today, where is God in this pandemic? And again, some of us are asking ourselves, how much can I hold on to faith in God when things go wrong? You know, World Health Organization released some of the statistics and they said in Kenya, 1.5 million people have lost their jobs. And when you look at these statistics, you may be asking yourself, how much can we hold on to faith when things go wrong? Some of us, we are in a place, we are feeling we are stagnated, we are not moving in our careers. Some of us, probably your marriage is on the rock. Some of you, maybe you have been cut. You're experiencing a salary cut and you're asking yourself, so how will I provide for my family in this season? And probably there are some of us who are asking themselves, when you go through hard times, how can you remember that God is with you? In 1918, the Spanish flu pandemic resulted in 50 million deaths worldwide. In 1957, the Asian flu pandemic was discovered and 1.1 million deaths globally were discovered. In 1981, HIV AIDS pandemic, which is also an epidemic, was discovered and 35 million people worldwide have died since its discovery and a cure is yet to be found. The COVID-19 pandemic, which is here with us, was discovered in China and more than 300,000 people worldwide have died and the scientists are yet to find a cure. Sometimes God protects us from going through potential problems. Sometimes he miraculously delivers us from all these problems. Sometimes we must go through difficult times, but do you know what? The Lord has given us a promise which he can never break, that he will never leave us or neither forsake us. If this is how God himself thinks about us, how different should we handle the storms in our life? If this is how God thinks about us when we are in the middle of a peril, when we are in the middle of a tough situation, where we are in a place whereby we do not know when or how we shall come out of this situation, God says he will never leave us, neither forsake us. If this is how God looks at us, then what kind of a people are we supposed to be? As Christians, how do we need to respond to tough times for the sake of our physical, 
mental and spiritual health. While God has never promised us an easy life, he does promise us over and over again throughout the scripture that he will never leave us no matter the circumstances we are in. When you look at scripture, it has many evidences of men and women who went through tough times and they made it. So how about us? We are still experiencing the same things. The word of God is not timeless. It was working then. And I believe the word of God is still at work today. Let me share with you three steps or highlights that will enable us, that will be an encouragement as we face tough times in our life. One of the things or one of the highlights for us as Christians that we need to embrace during the difficult times is reading and studying the Word of God. We live in a world where terrible things are happening. Bad news sells. Negative news makes the headline of the day. Many times things don't go the way we have planned. But when you, when you bring all these things together, you can easily get sick, you can easily get depression, you can easily get discouraged. But when you begin to read and study the Word of God, you shall begin to receive a supernatural divine energy that only God can give to you when you are facing a difficult situation. The Bible tells us that every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. That is Proverbs 30 and from verse 5. My second highlight that I want to share with you that will also be an encouragement to you in this season is rehearsing our past victories. It is for our own benefit that God tells us to remember things of the past. But the memories that God wants us to remember are for our past deliverances, which will help us to increase our faith for what we are going through right now. I believe when you look back into your life, the Lord has made a way for you in many situations. There are days you did not know where you will eat. There are days you did not know where you will get your money. There are days you did not know where you will get your rent. There are days you were sick and the Lord healed you. And when you begin to rehearse, when you begin to remember the past victories, again, you shall give yourself an opportunity to inject that supernatural divine energy that only comes from God, that shall give you the grace of God to go through a difficult season. My third highlight is going through life with the knowledge and understanding of God's attribute. What a comfort, what a refreshing moment when we live our life with an understanding that God is with us. What a comfort when we live our life with an understanding that God will never leave us. One of the attributes that I want to share with you today, there are three of them, but let me start with one of the attributes that will encourage you. Number one is God is immutable. In other words, God never changes. Malachi 3.6 brings it out more clearly. The Lord says, I do not change, so you the descendants are not destroyed. In other words, God is saying, I have kept that promise and that promise will not break. God is omnipotent. In other words, our God is powerful. Psalms 33 and verse 6, the Lord says, The heavens were made, their stereo hosts by the breath of his mouth. In other words, no obstacle is bigger than our God. COVID-19 is not bigger than our God. No obstacle is greater than our God. Hopelessness is not greater than our God. No calamity 
is greater than our God. Epidemics, pandemics, all these things, they are not greater than our God. God is omniscient. He is all-knowing, which means he knows everything. Nothing happens in the face of the earth without the Lord allowing it to happen. Probably let me ask you this question. This COVID-19 that we are battling on a day to day, is God communicating something? The calamities that we have experienced, the floods that we have experienced, the locusts that we have experienced, is the Lord trying to speak to us? Because the Lord does not allow any situation to take place without him allowing it. Where can I grow from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand will lay hold of me. That is Psalms 139 from verse 7 through to 10. Those who are saved by faith in Christ conquer those terrible things in the sense that Christ has won the most important victory for us. We conquer in that none of these things can overcome what God's love has gained for us. God demonstrates his love by standing with us in our tough circumstances. God's love gives us hope. God's love gives us peace that's unexplainable. Even if you don't feel it, or maybe you don't think it's true in a particular moment, we have this passage to hold on to as hope that we cannot be separated from God's love. Brothers and sisters, at this moment, I am aware we are all in a season that we have never been in before. I am aware we are all in a season our minds are baffling with so many questions. We are in a season whereby our hearts are full of doubts, full of fear, full of anxiety. We can no longer predict what is ahead of us. But friends, I want to encourage you this morning by telling you, God will never leave us and God will never forsake us. Probably it's a high time for us to return back to God. Probably it's a high time for us to reconnect back to the source. Probably it's a high time for us to begin to listen to what God is saying. Probably we are so preoccupied with many, many things that we cannot even hear the whisper from the Lord. Our lives are full of activities. Our lives are full of situations that we can no longer hear what the Lord is saying. But today, I want you to hang on to that scripture that Paul, who was the apostle, encouraged the church at Rome, that nothing, no epidemic, no pandemic, no situation will ever hinder the Lord from loving us, and vice versa, that can hinder us from loving back the Lord. And all this that I have shared with you this morning belongs to Christians. But it does not mean this does not apply to non-Christians. And if you're here and you're listening from wherever you are or you're watching us and you're not born again, I want to give you this opportunity to just connect with the Lord. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I recognize that I am a sinner. I receive the gift of new life today. I am your son from now on and forever. If you have repeated or if you have said that prayer, you are part of this great family. And my prayer for you is that may the Lord uphold you with his righteous right hand. My prayer for you is that may the enemy not come to break you down because of the decision you have made. At this moment, let me also pray 
for those of us who are sick, those of us who are probably in a place that is hard, my prayer for you today, may the Lord heal you, may the Lord give you strength, may the Lord come through for you, because our God is greater than all these things that are troubling us and all those things that are keeping us down. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you and may the good God make his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Mesh, for that wonderful message. Indeed, may our Lord bless you, may our Lord increase you. We have been blessed. For quite some time now, we've been in a partnership with some families at the Mukuru Kwa Jenga Slum through our social justice arm, Good Life Neighborhood Initiative. And through your donations, we've been able to feed over 170 families that have been in need during this pandemic. And we continue to appeal to you to continue giving, continue bringing the dry stuff, continue bringing the maize, the rice and the beans, continue bringing them because there are families who are coming to church every day that are in need of food. And you've not partnered with us in, that, in, that, in, this, in this journey, we invite you to come and donate your food. Drop it here at Nairobi Chapel in Mara, which is situated at the former Nakumat Embakasi, right after City Cabanas on Airport North Road. And if you want more details on this, kindly call or text this number 0718-424-888 and we'll be glad to receive your donations. And guys, as we've been practicing, as we've been doing this, we've had families and people who've given their lives to Christ. And as of now, we have over 30 souls that have come to Christ. Maybe you're there and they're saying you want to be part of this. You probably want to come and volunteer. Text your name and a day that you'd want to be available to come here and pray the families that come here and, the fa and give food to the families that come here and we'll schedule you a day during the coming week. Otherwise, thank you very much for your donations. May the Lord continue to bless you. May the Lord continue to, to give to you that you may suffer no lack. And for every one of us, let us pray as we find up our service. Our Lord and our God, we honor you this morning. Thank you for the wonderful, wonderful message that has been brought to us by Pastor Meshek. Oh God, we know that you still care for us, that you still are mindful of us. And even as we begin a new week, oh God, we begin in strength and we face it with boldness, knowing that you are on our side. And when you are for us, no one can be against us. Lord, would you lead us? Would you guide us? Father, would you walk with us during this week until we meet again? May you be glorified, our Lord. May you be exalted, our Father, now and forever evermore in Jesus name we pray thank you very much for tuning in until next time stay blessed may the Lord keep you may the Lord overwhelm you with his blessings may he make his face to shine upon you and may you not lack anything good be blessed we love you and see you next time thank you